Hello. Hello. How are you? Good to see you. I'm fine. And you? I'm very so, well. Good to oh, see you good. too. This is wonderful. Well, it's working. And uh, I managed. How are you, Sonia? Well, I'm fine. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited to be here and, uh, and speak with you about our challenges and also opportunities. Yeah. Yes. But I, I, uh, I mean, I'm enjoying this conversation. I had one last, uh, last week uh, with Miriam Berada. I think you, you followed that from, uh, from Macau. And uh, uh, we started this series at the, at the museum uh, during this uh, exceptional time that we are living, uh, which really uh, triggered this very strong desire to, to be in conversation with colleagues uh, across the continent. And uh, thank you for taking the time to, to do this. And, uh, and I think that we are all uh, working on the same territory and, um, and I also believe that we have very different uh, uh, situations and particularly you with uh, Palais de Lomé, a very new uh, institution. I like to say that it's more it's a very nascent new institu institution, but Palais de Lomé is even more because you, you opened barely last November, right? Exactly, and it was uh, the opening to the public was in December, second week of December, mm -hmm. which means that we are very, very new. Uh, Zaitsmoka and Makar are young, but I think we are even younger. We are toddlers. We are just beginning to, to work and then. So, yes, it's very, I'm very happy to be here and exchange with you, particularly during these times. And it's all, always good to, to be able to speak with institutions from the continent. So, thank you. Yeah. Uh, how how does it how how is it to open for six months and have to close? I mean, you're closed also well, since it's, about two months. You know, it's a long story. It's, in, it's not even six months. It's we opened for five months and then closed. Yeah, and the story was very okay. the the story of a project in itself is a very um, it's a very long story. I think I can write a book on it or even do a Nollywood film so it might be a Nollywood movie because it was an adventure a real journey full of twists and turns and it was full of twists and turns you know that they like that in Nollywood suspense and adventure each time you think it's over well something comes mm -hmm. so yes we, we thought we when we were beginning the project so it, it dated back it's very specific because it was a landmark building in the history of Togo. It was the former governor's palace. So we had the German, the British, the French, and then the first presidency, and the special guest of honor of the Togolese presidency were hosted there. And then it was abandoned for more than 22 years. So when we first incepted, mm -hmm. uh, uh, began the project, the venue was very, it was romantic because it was room, it was a very romantic room with trees going inside. So we had to program it and work on the programming to transform this place that was so important in the Togolese history into something that is an art and culture center that showcases contemporary Africa. So using a heritage mm -hmm. building to show the present and hopefully the future. So in itself, it was an adventure. We worked for it, um, since 2014 on the project to have it happen, to make it happen. So uh, at, the, at the inauguration last December, I, uh, to be honest with you, I thought it was, given that the, the, the way the, the, it was hard to transform this room and all these steps to make it happen and have the exhibitions done, etc., I thought it was over. So I just told myself, well, the hardest part is behind me. Now everything mm -hmm. will go smooth and I will rest in 2020. <laughs> So well, there is no, so that's there just is no such twist. thing as solid ground. <laughs> yes, exactly. So the COVID-19 is just another twist, you know, it's just 
And we were very happy uh, because the, uh, there was a huge excitement about the project with people coming out of curiosity because it was the forbidden place. Before they couldn't see, mm -hmm. they couldn't go. So we, we mm -hmm. had the public, the Togolese public coming and discovering the venue and liking it, making it. So we were building audience and then mm -hmm. we stopped in the middle of it. So, so yes, the, building, very... the, building has a, the building has a history in the imaginary of the uh, Togolese uh, people in the Togolese society. Yes, exactly. It was, it was really a building that was important uh, for the history, but people couldn't go inside. So they could just, mm -hmm. they, it was behind the walls. So one of the first decisions we took when we began was to open the walls to have iron gates that were transparent so that you can see through and uh, to make it more welcoming to the people so that they could come and discover the venue because it's their place. I mean, it's for every Togolese. Uh, so we work with the, the guides. We work on, uh, on being very welcoming to people, um, to, have, to the average Togolese. So it was already a challenge mm. to have them come and discover the venue. And uh, so we work very strongly on, on being very down to earth and welcoming uh, and opening our doors. Mm. So it was uh, one of the, the, one of the, uh, the challenges we, we were trying to do and we, I, we yeah. were thinking to succeed in doing. What I found very, uh, quite fascinating with, uh, about Palais de Lomé is the fact that there is this mix of heritage, uh, environment, contemporary art, uh, social work, so to speak. How do you bring that all together in your in the program? What is what is the intention? Because uh, I strongly believe that we we in the future, at least here on the continent, that we really have to think more and more in, about integrative, so to speak, uh, uh, kind of field. So having heritage, having environmental and also some sort of uh, medicinal, uh, pharmacopoeic kind of activity mm -hmm. and uh, wanting to, uh, having the plan to uh, roll out uh, a contemporary program. How do you bring all that together? Well, you're right, Koyo, because it's a, it's a very unique combination of nature, design, biodiversity, culture. So mixing all together uh, in one place and explaining is, uh, is I, I would say that the venue makes it easier. Makes, it makes it easier because it's, it's in itself expresses emotion. So I think mm -hmm. to do that, you, 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 you speak to the senses, to the emotions, and mm -hmm. also, of course, to, to the knowledge of history. So what we did is that in the way we staged and, um, the programming, we decided to have a very diverse programming till the very beginning uh, for our first exhibitions. So that's why we had five exhibitions to showcase the various mm -hmm. facets and aspects of the venue, of the ballet in itself. So one of the exhibitions is more patrimony, but in a contemporary way. So we work with contemporary artists, photographer. So it's the Togo of the Kings and Togo of the Kings. It was, can you imagine, it was the first time in Togo that we showcased the Togolese artifacts from various regions, from all the regions. Um, so it was very moving and interesting for the Togolese to discover their various regions and what they have, but uh, that is still lo uh, loose today and alive. So, and we work mm -hmm. for that with uh, videos, photographers, uh, and contemporary artists. So this mm -hmm. stages in another way for them, and it appeals to them. Uh, the other way we wanted to, to make them understand design was to have um, a venue dedicated to design. So it, we will be among the first in West Africa to have a venue dedicated to design and fine arts and crafts that are not a showroom, a commercial showroom, so it will be really a space mm -hmm. for design. And our first mm -hmm. exhibition is about Kosi Agassi, 
because he is a Togolese slash Benin slash Brazil slash uh, designer. And uh, mm -hmm. so it was another way because people were saying, well, so for the Togolese, it was interesting to see someone from Togo, but a, um, with a huge uh, exposure to the rest of the world. So it's a mixture of both. And that was interesting mm -hmm. for them. So the approach to have them come was through this, this uh, so special history of Kosi. So the second exhibition, one, another exhibition is about a contemporary art exhibition that is called Free Borders, curated by a young Nigerian curator, Aminat Agoro. So to do that, what she did and her choice was to work on materiality of artists across the region. So from Togo, Benin, Ghana, Nigeria. So each time the common theme to have the Togolese come, the Togolese audience, the average audience come and be curious about that was to work on everyday objects. So the selection of artists where uh, the, the criteria of selection were where these artists work on everyday objects, but transform it into something else. So that was another criteria. Mm -hmm. And um, so for the average Togolese, they were very curious to say, well, this object, I use it, for instance, let me give you an exam example, a cement bag. It's something you can find everywhere or mosquito nest. The, mos the mm -hmm. mosquito nest, net or cement bag are very everyday objects. But thanks to Edwige Aplogon, an artist mm -hmm. from Benin and Togo, Edwige transformed this into canvas. She uses mm -hmm. these items for canvas. So, or Serge Cloté, he used oil gallons to transform them into something else. Or Kelani mm -hmm. Abbas, so I can quote so, so many artists from the exhibitions, yeah. each of them having this particular approach. So each exhibition has tried to be one of the, the main questions we're always asking ourselves is, how can we be relevant to our audience? Uh, how can we mm -hmm. be relevant to the Togolese? Because the Togolese are yeah. not the one from, so each people are specific, so how can we be relevant to them? So that's why we chose this mm. approach in the way with this particular approach. So each exhibition has tried to be one of the, the main questions we're always asking. A uh, museum uh, on the continent, but I uh, I am very I'm very uh, impressed by by the range of you know of uh, fields and disciplines that you are planning to cover at uh, Palais de Lomé and also when you say that uh, your your main um, of course your direct audience is the local audience so uh, my next question would be something like uh, um, we are both working in institutions that depend on gathering that depends on coming together that depends on bringing people together uh, the closure of the of the of the of the palais uh, how do you keep programming during that time or did you take the maybe very legitimate uh, position of saying it is closed so we are not programming how do you, how, are, how are you bridging this time well first we follow the government measures uh, that that uh, to close the, all the, the places in this time that continues behind the scenes. Even though the Palais is closed and the park is closed as well, we are working on the next programming and to extend also the exhibitions. And we're working also to, to have the, the, for instance, the, uh, the, the, the schools come. So with the rectorate, we are mm -hmm. doing the next step because obviously maybe in two months or we will reopen or one month or two months, it depends on the situation. Yeah. So we will reopen. So we are preparing the next step, which is very important as well to be able to, well, to think of the next step. And the second thing is that, um, you, you know, you were speaking about the park and the park, mm -hmm. uh, the park, I think it, it gives a lot of energy and resilience because we are thinking of nature um, and the next step for the, uh, for the people that will come to visit. So for the time being, for instance, um, you have, we, we have a real, given the, the current situation, we really think about how to, in the park, we had planted six months ago, medicinal garden. 
So at that mm -hmm. time, it wasn't topical, but it was important for us to, to create a discovery because people living in Lomé don't know much about the traditional herbs and plants of Togo. So it was the opportunity for them to discover the use of plants. So six months ago, it wasn't very topical. It was just something we thought was very important. Then this crisis mm -hmm. arrives. So it's also an opportunity to think about how to strengthen our immune system. And we have for that plants. So it really is the opportunity for the public to discover these plants, which means that we are working mm -hmm. on programs and activities related to these gardens and how we use plants, how to grow them, how they work. So what is interesting and what we are thinking about in this time of, uh, uh, in this special time, it's also an opportunity to think. And when you discussed with, uh, I had very interesting conversation with some artists, two artists actually, mm -hmm. plus a third one, mm -hmm. they wanted to do something about the, the, the plants. So they are mm -hmm. artists, they are not scientists, but they say, well, it's a source, this park and the plants and the way we, in traditional African medicine and botany, it was very important, has inspired us things for our next exhibition and next works. So mm -hmm. it, it, the, this nature is also a source and the situation, the current situation we currently live is also an opportunity to think of over mm -hmm. means of work and over themes of work. The part for that is, uh, I would say very important, the work on the part because it's still going when we will open. That's, that's, really, that's really incredible because I think there is, there is, there are so many practices in in uh, uh, in contemporary practice of many artists of the continent that are really looking at land, at really looking at environment, at mm -hmm. really looking at you know means of care, of healing, of uh, and really also uh, uh, rethinking um, uh, the importance of you know land as a as a as a as a bearer of uh, of not only of memory but also as a bearer of knowledge and knowledge that can be that can be uh, um, trans interpreted that can be in, in integrated in words so uh I do you plan to have a, a residency program with a particular kind of profile and of artists who work in this area, or is the park uh, a, like an additional asset in for the entire project for artists to engage with? Well, we plan both actually, because it's uh, in the park, you already have sculptures with artists that came to in a residence of a, in, a, in the Palais. But we, we, now planning, we are now planning a specific residency program um, for artists and also in the liter in literature design, mm -hmm. specifically targeted mm -hmm. on the environment and the park. So it will be mm -hmm. end of this year. And so we are setting it uh, so that it will be for them, the, uh, it will give them material because we, we noticed that ethnobotany, um, ethnobotany and the, the, the park. So in, in such park, you have several approaches, environment, how how we deal with environment um, today. Mm -hmm. So it's very topical, but also ethnobotany, how you use with traditional herbs. But some artists also mm -hmm. are interested in the, the way, uh, in the plants, the way we, we dye, the traditional dyes, be it indigo, uh, indigo or mm -hmm. cola, you know, cola that is used in Coca-Cola is also an, an herb that cola was dance. used, a root that was used in, in Africa. So they, they're very interested in working on that. One of the designers worked with resin, so something very specific mm -hmm. that comes from a tree. So the, 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 we have several ideas of residencies that will be uh, for the end of this beginning, in, uh, end of this year. So yes, it gave, it, mm -hmm. I think this, because residency, to be honest with you, Koyo, when I thought first mm -hmm. of residency, it was more about, of course, artists and curators, because we have a real need for curation and design, but I didn't thought it necessarily connected with the park. And then when you discuss mm. with artists, they express the need and desire to, it's, to it's have this obvious. relationship connection. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I was very and, happy uh, about that because it, it was not what I planned initially. Tell, I mean, we, we all don't know enough of 
all our local ecosystems. So can you tell us something more about the local Lomé ecosystem and how Palais de Lomé is, is situated in, within that ecosystem? Uh, they, you are, who are kind of your direct interlocutors in terms of institutions, if there are any? And if not, and beyond Togo, who are, who are you looking at? Who are you conversing with? You know, what, how are those kind of uh, channels of uh, exchange and, uh, and collaboration happening from your perspective? Yes, from my perspective, you know, in, in, in Lomé, and that's why I, so you have you do, mm -hmm. you had galleries that that closed or transformed. One of the galleries actually is transformed into residency. So we have uh, uh, three residency. Of course, you have uh, Institut Français Institut Goethe, um, a national museum. So the ecos and a very new foundation that that uh, that opened exactly in the time of uh, the opening of the Palais. That is uh, Fondation Agnès-Saint Paul Ayi. And it was a foundation of uh, the works of Paul Ayi. Paul Ayi played a very important role in the Togolese ecosystem because he was, he's one of the major Togolese artists and he was, besides, he was very generous. So in his workshop, mm -hmm. he trained many people because we don't have any, in Lomé, you don't have any school of arts in Togo, mm -hmm. which means that mm -hmm. Paul, Paul Ayi played an important role to, to train the, the artists and we had, um, so, this is the, the ecosystem and we also have uh, we have three galleries three galleries and so it's yes some galleries even some galleries residency so it's very it's a system that tries to that that is currently flourishing i would say it's flourishing mm -hmm. now it's full of initiative a few years ago a few years back i would say it was uh, it was quieter now it's really thriving and we have more and more yeah. initiatives Beach residencies, yeah. galleries. So. You mentioned you mentioned the National Museum, which I, yes. if I, if I, I, I assume is a, is a government uh, institution, just like yourself, Palais de Lomé, which is an initiative by yes. the government of of Togo. Of Togo. Uh, how do you relate to the National Gallery, the National Museum of Togo, for instance? In, uh, well, we don't have any link yeah. because, um, I mean, we, we work together, for, for instance, for Togo of the Kings, we work with the curators of, of, uh, for some pieces of, for the exhibition. But the National Museum, I would say, is a museum. We are an art and culture center. The National Museum is, to, is turned toward traditional objects. Uh, we, as an art and culture center, we don't have any, we don't own any collection, which means that we change, we don't have any permanent collection. So we change each time the exhibitions. So we have only temporary exhibitions. So that's the main mm -hmm. difference between the, nation, the National Museum and the Palais de Lomé. And uh, so, but we are very happy to have such an ecosystem because for, for me, and I think one of the themes very important is collaboration. Mm -hmm. So to collaborate yeah. with institutions inside the country and outside as well. So both are yeah. important. So, so sometimes, you know, uh, uh, one would hope that uh, mm -hmm. an initiative that is launched by the government, and that means it is wished by the government and supported by the government, mm -hmm. that you might be more or less safe, so to speak. And I'm saying it this very, very uh, cautiously. And, I, and, and what I want to, to get at is, uh, are you financially totally covered by the government of Togo since this is like the latest jewel that the, the, the launch into the cultural field there? Well, we were very lucky. I think Togo is among the very rare countries in at least West Africa, for, for which what I know, uh, that have supported uh, and financed uh, heritage and cultural program. So we were very lucky about that. And it was really, um, it was a, so we were very lucky, even though it wasn't simple, 
you know, it's not very simple because each time at the beginning of a project uh, to have it funded every year, year by year, you had to convince about the, because each budget is programmed year by year, so on a yearly basis. So you had to convince, of course, on the importance of the project. But at the same time, you have people and that it's normal saying, well, um, we, we, we have other priorities. We African countries have other priorities for culture. We have school, healthcare system, obviously, infrastructure. So um, it was staged not to decrease because, of course, with this crisis, they, they have to deal with health issues and the most vulnerable populations as well. And the corporation saying, well, the corporation saying, well, we have to rethink all, all, all our items and events that we planned with you and partnerships. Well, I wouldn't say it's the easiest situation, but I remain, you know, you know I always remain very uh, optimistic and reasonably optimistic, so to say. So it means that it's oh, not easy, but it doesn't mean it's we definitely, We definitely have to be extremely optimistic because otherwise we will not survive. And uh, I like to... Exactly. Uh, this, I mean, it triggered uh, because of this uh, situation, but at the same time, I, I like to think that uh, as diverse and, uh, and multiple that uh, Africa is, we uh, and particular and, and we face a lot of similar challenges when it comes to um, art institution building, and uh, and I also like to think that uh, the the situation of crisis that we find ourselves in is not new because I, I, I always say that we are in crisis since 500 years. So COVID-19 is just another layer on a very fat layer that exists since 500 years. So, and, and what I want to, to, to get at is to understand um, the impact of, you know, having to open uh, do a huge, a beautiful international launch and having to close three months later. Uh, what are your, your immediate challenges, you know, like on a day to day, how does it translate for you? How, how can I imagine how your day is like during this time, you know? Well, the thing is that I try, you're right, we, the continent has been in crisis for so many times, so it's not something that is, uh, we don't take it as, I, t I, I, I try to take it as a challenge, challenge to, to have time to, to think about the next steps, events, and how to do it. Um, mm -hmm. So we spoke about activities, uh, and uh, so that's the thing, and uh, on a daily basis, the thing is that, for instance, the gardeners and the park, we are, we are hardly working on the park because some parts of the park mm -hmm. were closed. So we are working on them to be able to open them once the palais will be opened. So this, so this of course, this aspect to structure the parks and see how, what kind of a walk you can have in these areas. What can you see and mm. discover how it grows? So it's a, it's always very inspiring and uh, and important for the, the, the next uh, the, the visitors mm. that will come after the opening. So it's one of the the facts we're working on. Uh, obviously, for the impacts, the rest of the staff, some of them are waiting. Of course, we are waiting uh, for the venue to open. So we try to 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 think of the of the next activities. But it, it's not very easy. It's not always easy because it sounds abstract. Mm. So, because they, they all what ask, I'm, what, uh, like, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt. Sorry. What I'm hearing yes, so from I you is that say. you did, no, no, what I'm hearing from you is that you didn't do that kind of automatic move to the, to online that happened almost in everywhere else. And that the no, no, we did. level Actually, is, is we did. the same. So, yeah. Exactly, okay. we did that. Please. We did that. So we're working online. We're working online, mm -hmm. and you can see on the Instagram, uh, we have 
post it, several posts it. And what, we, what is coming next is to have the videos of some artists. So what was behind the scenes normally for the exhibitions will be, uh, will be transformed into videos. So artists in their, works, uh, in, uh, in their workshops explain their work. So for, for instance, the exhibition uh, for the exhibition Free Borders, the contemporary art exhibitions, we are currently working on small format videos that were at the beginning, the, the visit of the artists were um, saved. So it was, uh, in, uh, it was recorded, but most for archiving, for our own archive, personal archive of the Palais. It wasn't within the intent to, to show it to the public, but now we will re do so small videos to, to, to show it. And it will be also the opportunity to enhance the online presence of uh, some artists of the artists because some of them don't have any uh, online presence at all. So we will help them by bringing them online presence so that their work can be shown mm -hmm. and exhibited online as well. Because some don't have any mm -hmm. website and they are not online. So it's also for us, and, it's an opportunity online. So we're working uh, really on this yeah. aspect. We at uh, Zeitz Mocha, we are really going mm -hmm. to, I mean, we are closed now almost two months uh, uh, in, a few, in a few days. And uh, during this time, we are really uh, investing in really rethinking a non-expected space to to think, to rethink, to question, and uh, to uh, uh, reformulate uh, uh, certain uh, positions in terms of uh, museum making uh, uh, on mm -hmm. the continent. And, uh, and we are going as far as asking ourselves uh, if the exhibition in its kind of form that we know it now and that most of us, you know, practice, if, it, if at all it is the right format to uh, convey art and discuss art in, in our environments. Are you uh, discussing ideas like that in Lomé? Well, you know, uh, this we did it prior to the opening, because one of the, when I'm speaking about the activities, is what that we were asking ourselves how to attract the Togolese public and make them uh, be interested in the, uh, the means we thought of. Um, and I agree with that, that the format of the classical format of exhibition can be changed. So what we, we, are, we, we work on is to have, for instance, you have in Togo and in, in other countries of West Africa, you have a strong tradition of storytelling and we have mm -hmm. very good storytellers. So involve them to explain the exhibition, to show the exhibitions. So we have programmed oh, that's, that, that's, that's, and we have staged that. That's and they are not, you know, they, is... they're, they're actors, they're cry. you also cry. Because mm -hmm. they, 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 they know how to convey emotion. So they are fantastic and they sing. Some of them sing so well and they play the saxo and also chora and instruments. So it's another way of, of staging the exhibition. So they are part of our programming because we really wanted to involve them. And we have also a very strong tradition of puppets. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it tends to disappear, the puppet show. Uh, so it was also the opportunity to involve these puppet pe people so that they can share their tradition and transmit it. So that was one mm -hmm. of the way. And we, for instance, Gaito Lusuglo, one of the co-curators of the exhibition Togo of the Kings, when you hear him explain the exhibitions, he stage, he's also a comedian. He's a comedian, mm -hmm. so which means that when he speaks, exactly. he stages I mean, what he we says. We really have to think of totally different ways of mediation, different ways of, you know, uh, uh, presenting the art and working with artists with a very clear and very strong ear to what the audience, the local audience, the audience wants, you know, would like to see. So um, I'm absolutely pleased to hear these, uh, these uh, methods that you are applying. Yes, and this, this one, and you know, it, it was very, when we, what I, I was impressed by is that be it children or grown-ups, when you have storytellers, 
when you have comedians, actors, staging and speaking, you listen to the content. And it, it's, mm -hmm. but the content, for instance, someone like Gaetan, the content is very scientific. It's knowledge because he's also, he curates the exhibition. So the content is mm -hmm. very, it's someone from the university with a profession. And for that, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the park is very, once again, is very helpful for that. Because for instance, the group of uh, storytellers, they were inside and out in both. Mm. And they are not telling the same story inside with the piece of works and outside yeah. where they can tell their stories that they learn from their villages and about nature. So it's different approach. Are you planning to because music maybe sorry. yeah to exchange exhibitions with other institutions, uh, let's say West Africa. I know that means are limited and that we are entering a, a phase where we don't know tomorrow if we can move, if mobility would be the same as uh, we've known it so far. Are you, uh, are you, uh, do you have any intentions to collaborate intensively or is it something really uh, very local for Lomé and for, for Togo? What are uh, any collaborations with other institutions? Well, I'm dreaming of it. I'm dreaming of it. Because we, we have to be relevant to the Togolese, but the content of the exhibitions can interest and appeal, be appealing to other people from the rest of the continent. And uh, I really think it's good to be able to create an African ecosystem. So uh, mm -hmm. I was very happy to see that in Ghana, you have initiatives like Nubuke So Galleries, but also Nubuke Foundation and other initiatives coming as we, we, so other initiatives coming in Ghana, in, in, uh, in Benin mm -hmm. as well, in Côte d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. not to mention Senegal, and also other parts, mm -hmm. Northern Africa, Southern Africa. So I'm very happy that we can create, as I hope, we can create this ecosystem because we all benefit from the ecosystem, be it mm. for the exhibitions and showcase the exhibitions, but also exchange uh, knowledge because we are a very young institution and we, we lack some knowledge, for instance, curatorial, we need to train. Uh, I would like to be also a place of training for the Togolese because this ecosystem doesn't exist uh, in Togo you know, for the time being. So where, very much I it. don't necessarily, I mean, uh, Sonia, I don't necessarily agree, you know, I mean, everything you told, you said so far and what I know of your, your program and the conversations we've had before, uh, I don't necessarily agree that we sort of lack curatorial, you lack curatorial Yes, knowledge. I know that no. you don't, I, I know no, that no, you no, don't approve this I notion, really, but really you. That, no. I really believe mm -hmm. that, listen, I really believe that there are millions and millions of ways of curating and that curating in itself is mainly about selection and presentation and context, of course. So you are developing or applying methods of selection and methods of curating and methods of associations that I see as extremely uh, imaginative, progressive, caring to there is only this kind of Euro-American sense of curatorial practice. I mean, people have, curating has been done since ever. As I said, uh, yes, I agree with you. You know, one of you. And, and really, and, and, I am, and I am against the idea to say that we lack knowledge of curating because it's it's all it's also underlining this idea of absence as opposed to looking at what is present. So I think uh, no, no, it is interesting I, from that perspective. I understand you. I think as far as Africa is concerned, the word lack is not the best way to express it. Because I think we are so rich in so many things that lacking is just one aspect. But what I think, you know what, for one of the exhibitions, the Togo of the Kings, the curators yeah. that curated the exhibition, so it was Gaetan, uh, this, uh, this, uh, the person I spoke to you, he, who is also a comedian, so an actor in theater. 
Uh, and the other was uh, Kony Alem, one of the foremost mm -hmm. Togolese writers. So Kony Alem mm -hmm. is a writer. He writes literature. So the way he mm -hmm. exhibited is very different for someone with a background in curatorial uh, uh, Western style. So I think it's very important to have these voices, to hear these voices. But at the same time, if you want to, to train people and create a very solid ground for to have a wealth of experiences and knowledges, you also need to have this mm. kind of cura the typical curatorial practices as well. One can enrich the, uh, the other. Well, I mean, so I Sonia, think it's important what is to have typical both. curatorial practice? There is no typical curatorial practice. That's the point. That's true. Think. That it depends. And, uh, it depends. And, uh, it depends. And, uh, it depends and, uh, but... And, and I really believe that, and I want to put it out there for you and for all of us, everybody who's listening to us, you know, uh, we, have, we have been curating on the continent since ever, you know. We didn't right. wait for someone to label a practice, curatorial practice, to make selection of, of, for, of works, to assemble them, to present them in a certain way, to have certain aesthetics. So, and I, and, I, and I strongly believe that there is such a wealth of methods of, of conveying artworks, of presenting artworks that have been are totally under-researched, underused, that we have to sort of reclaim in, in these institutions that we run today. And, uh, and I think uh, the, the very constellation of, of Palais de Lomé, I look at it as extremely progressive, you know, bringing heritage, contemporary, environment, you know, storytelling. All of that together brings it back to what... Labels, so I think labels. We labels. have to think about that. I, I, I agree with you, but at the same time, I think it's important to have both. So it's important to have Talk of the Kings, but also to have over to be part of, a, of a training people and exposing them to other things. It's important to have both. And I, I was a great admirer of what we did at Raw Material, because at Raw Material, you have this kind of curatorial experiences and residencies as well. You see, so it was curatorial residency. I think you can train people. When I say train, it's, they learn and then they make their own choices. They can choose not to be uh, classical and traditional in their way to, of curating the exhibitions, but at least they know what it is. And I think when you know, and when you're not formatted, because the objective is not to mold people and format them, but at least when you're exposed mm -hmm. to the things and questions, you ask yourself the questions. Mm -hmm. So you see your, your work and your approach in another way. And I think it's important also mm -hmm. for the conversation to at least be exposed to something else. So for instance, you know, in, in raw material, what he did was very interesting because you, you have many young curators coming and working as researcher because research is also interesting. So I mean, all these items and all these aspects, I think are very, uh, nurtures the work and nurtures the progressive approach. Because once, mm -hmm. once you know all this and you have, uh, you have ingested all this, you make it your personal food. That's mm -hmm. how it can work yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So no, what, I, mean, I agree with you 100% is that I don't want to imitate any Western style institution. For, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's for sure because I think in the continent we have a wealth of approaches, of experience, of voices. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of, yeah. The continent is so full of energy that we need to keep this energy and not label people. <laughs> It's also, I mean, it's also full of, I mean, it's also full of knowledge and particularly full of knowledge about, you know, uh, not only making art, but also living with art, which I yeah. really believe that uh, there is a, a very strong, I mean, why, you know, I will call it classical museums and galleries struggle with so-called audience. It's because I strongly believe that 
there is something, there is a gap or there is a disconnect that we are not connecting fully yet. And this is what uh, we mm -hmm. at Side Smoker are really very busy with thinking, you know, how to, uh, how to not fall into the trap of that disconnect, you know. So as a, uh, uh, museums institutions tend to uh, think most of the time how to bring people to the museum or how to bring people to the center. And we are thinking more of how to bring the museum to the people. So that is, that is what we are busy with. Yes, and I think it's, you, you're perfectly right. It's one of the main issues. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the project, when I spoke about the, 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 the uh, a few years back, when I spoke about the project, they were telling me, do you think it is what is needed? The population won't be interested. And I said, well, first, I think they will come out of curiosity because the, the mm -hmm. building was the forbidden place. So just for this very specific reason, they will come. And then they will discover things that you say very speak to their mind the and souls. Can you say very quickly it why was the forbidden. building was forbidden? Because it was a Can governor's you... palace and presidency, which means that it was a place of power and the people, the average Togolese didn't have access. Yeah. So for this Just specific for reason, the... at the opening, yeah. yes, historical reasons. And then when we were working on it, there was huge curiosity saying, well, what's going on? So and I mm -hmm. think to have people come, you have other means of having them come. For instance, one of the exhibition is uh, the name is Lomé Plus. Lomé Plus, it's curated, mm -hmm. so to say, not by a classical curator. That's why you see each each of the curator, of the, the majority of the curator of exhibitions don't necessarily have a curatorial background, except for instance uh, Sandra Agassi for Cosi Agassi's exhibition and so on. But for instance, for Lomé Plus, Lomé Plus is the history of the, the city, but also its future and how we see it in 50 years, how we project, how do we project the city? So the, curators, mm -hmm. of, the curator of this exhibition is someone very interesting because he's a thinker, he's architect, anthropologist, but also mm -hmm. uh, in head, um, he created a way lab, a fab lab in, uh, in Togo. So fab lab, fabrication lab, mm -hmm. something very high tech. And he's interested in mm -hmm. 3D thinking, 3D uh, printing. So someone that mixes mm -hmm. entropy. Does it need mm -hmm. to be an imitation of Silicon Valley? How can we create our own African smart city that will integrate as well environment? So for instance, he has initiatives in the city where he grows his own vegetables. Yeah. So That's all amazing. these items. That's absolutely amazing. So he Sonia, Sonia, yes, he mixes we, we technology. Are minutes, we are, yeah, we are oh. eight minutes to the end. And I would like yes. us to take at least two or three questions before before okay. we we close. And uh, I don't, I'm yes. not uh, uh, oh I'm not very good at it. Okay, we have one question here which says yes, just you have you... Uh, Are you I seeing the same? Just Let to, me read to, it to... to you. Hold it. Okay. Uh, do you have a strategy? to documenting and recording the use of plants in residencies for future generations? That's a yes, question do, for actually. you. Not you know, mm -hmm. yes, that's, that's an interesting one. We, we do actually have it. Uh, I must admit, when I was working in the park and at the beginning of the project, I was very ignorant toward plants and all this. So when I was in the park, mm -hmm. I was very lucky because one of the, the persons working with us who was supposed to be in construction, he was also a traditional healer. So he knew a mm -hmm. lot about plants. So I learned a lot from him. So some plants that mm -hmm. I just wanted to throw away that seems to be nothing, so to say. He told me, oh, mm -hmm. this is very important and this and this. So you discover you have a treasure trove and we, we began to, to, to save and record all these items. So it's, it's really mm -hmm. interesting even for residency to be able to, to, to restitute all these because it, mm -hmm. there are many yeah. stories around all these plants. So yes, yeah. it's something that we plan to do. There is another question. I think this one is for me. Aside from the shift to online, 
how can African museums innovate when their audiences cannot visit in person? How do you do that? I will, I will answer later. Well, I think, I hope the situation won't last forever. Uh, but for mm -hmm. instance, one of the means is also to, to be able to come to them. So one of the exhibitions mm -hmm. I was speaking about, Lomé Plus, we planned since in the, in the film, one of the, the, the film of the exhibitions, we, we have uh, filmed street hawkers. So street hawkers, people from the market. So we plan to go mm -hmm. inside the market to show them the exhibition. So the exhibition goes out. Mm -hmm. Of course, we want them to enter in the venue, but we want also to go out in the city. Mm -hmm. So it might be yeah. one of the means to, to be able to, to have a link with yeah. them. Well, I, I, ra I rather, I, I'm optimistic because I think that this is not a situation we will stay in forever. Uh, mm. And of course it is challenging, as I said initially, that because we are gathering uh, space, people need to come together in order to experience what we do. Uh, but at the same time, uh, even though uh, I'm starting to do, I began to do these uh, online conversations, I don't necessarily believe that the shift or the substitute is, you know, the shift to online, like uh, a lot of museums did, uh, because I also think that it is very important to you know, to have a certain uh, institutional emotion in the sense that this is happening for something. What, what can we learn out of it, you know? Uh, this, this very continuous kind of run to, okay, we are close, but we have to, you know, uh, this frenzy, I am not part of it, and I don't want to support it. I think that, uh, there is a conversation, there are conversations that, that need to continue, that, that are initiated or triggered due to the situation. But uh, I still believe that at the end of the day, uh, artistic practice or artworks can, need to be seen in a context that is the museum or the studio or public space or the gallery or, you know, uh, communal events and so on. So I, um, I strongly believe that, yes, um, it, the, the challenge is, is to, to bridge this time in, a, in the in most intelligent way possible, but not necessarily to substitute this time or with uh, with, uh, with programs or offering that uh, should, you know, uh, bring the art online in a, in, a, in a massive way that it's happening. I am not, not convinced of that. I don't know if it makes sense to you, Sonia. Well, I think work, the studio and the real dimensions, I would say. So nothing replaces mm. that. So mm. the situation we are currently all living is not due to be forever. I mean, we will reopen, all of us will reopen. So it's just a step to, it's just a moment to leave. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sonia. We are almost true. And Instagram will cut in like 30 seconds or two minutes or so. I, I totally enjoyed it. And I, we absolutely so have I. to Yeah, we absolutely have to continue conversing and exchanging because I think that there is so much that people like you and me and other colleagues in the field can, can, can do uh, for our institution, for our audiences, for our contexts, and but also in a larger Pan-African conversation. So I really thank you for that. And uh, I hope to talk to you soon again. <laughs> Oh, with and pleasure. Bye, Thank bye, you for bye. inviting me, Koyo. Yeah. I, as usual, it's an, it's, it was a pleasure to exchange with you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Well. Thank, bye you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Hello. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all too. for your, your questions and interventions. Thank <laughs> Thanks you. for the audience. Bye.